Okay, this is the eighth and final episode of Behind the Walls Season 1. Now, the first seven episodes, we followed one of Earhart Construction's models being built from start to finish. So for the last month, they've been doing the drywall and all the interior finishes, and today we're heading over to do a final walkthrough of the home. So Cor, before we tour this home, can you tell us real quick the specs of the model? Yeah, it's uh, 2,751 square feet. It's a first floor master bedroom. It's three bathrooms and three and a half bedrooms. And it'll be pretty fun to look at the half bedroom. Since we follow the uh, process all along, mm -hmm. I know a lot of thought went into building this home. Yeah. Do you want to quickly give us an overview on the lifestyle aspect of the home? Oftentimes what ends up happening is I'll have a person come to me and they'll say, hey, we want a 3,000 square foot home. We want a 4,000 square foot home. And I say, why? Because how are you gonna live? What are the decisions you want? And what are your needs and wants? And I think as a person getting ready to build a custom home, I think those are things that you wanna think about. Do you want a 3,000 square foot home? Because a 3,000 square foot home can look wildly different one to another. What you ought to be thinking about is, hey, are we thinking about entertaining? Are we thinking about, we've got multiple people living here? Is it just the two of us? Now this home that we're walking through really is based on two people primarily living here. And we'll talk about some really cool aspects about people visiting and those kind of things. And what I like to talk about is multi-use rooms, and I like to talk about it as away rooms. Because we've gotten so much into an open concept living, which is phenomenal. We love it, we're social, kitchens and dining, and great rooms are pulling together, but we also want spaces where we can have some privacy. Go read a book, or if one of us listens to the TV a little louder than the other person. Don't think about square footage. Think about how you want to live, and that's going to get you into the right home that you want. We're in a nice large foyer here, and the idea is that it really flows into the rest of the house because you want a kind of a comfortable place to greet and then kind of pull you into the rest of the home. And so we're walking here now into the to the great room. And really this is that open concept living that we're talking about is really connected from people being in the great room. As you can see this dining area and then into the kitchen with the large island and it really pulls people together this way. So we're looking at nine foot ceilings here. We're looking at a great wainscoting that's running around the room, giving a really comfortable trim detail. We've got some great recessed lighting, which creates real ease and flexibility for furniture location, yet still a dining room fixture, which defines that space. And all of it's finished with a sand and finish in place oak flooring, which really ties the spaces together and gives a really rich, nice look. And now we're gonna move into the kitchen. Can you start with the finishes? What kind of countertops do we have? What kind of cabinets? Yeah, so we've got, we've got style stone, uh, quartz countertop, and I love the way that a lot of quartz products have moved. It looks like Carrera marble, and yet it is incredibly durable, and you're not gonna be cracking, chipping. It's not gonna get any stains. It's not gonna soak in something, and which is so important in a kitchen to have something durable. The other thing is we've got a great uh, uh, painted cabinet with a kind of modified shaker look, which I really like. It's given just a little bit more trim detail around the flat panel. Stainless steel, appliances. The other thing that I think is really fun is this, is I'm loving the open shelves. Yeah. We've run the tile to the ceiling behind the shelves, which gives a great look. We've got plenty of cabinetry, so it's kind of fun to play with some open shelves, just give a little different look. And also, by having some open shelves, it actually creates uh, some more space. Instead of having upper cabinets kind of uh, pulling in, the shrinking the space a little bit, the open shelves create a little bit more depth, which is really nice. We really wanted kind of a shaker craftsman type feel, and so we went with a really nice clean trim board, uh, some one by six base, which is really nice. And then what we did is we mashed it with a great two panel masonite door, which really adds to the design element of the trim and pulls in with the shaker cabinets in the kitchen, which I think is great. And you'll see these throughout the home as well. Slightly around the corner, still connected to the kitchen, is the is the hearth room. And this is that great place to unwind, having a little bit more cozy space that the scale is correct. You know, we get into sometimes these giant two-story spaces, mm -hmm. and that's not a comfortable place to unwind, and you want a cozy space. And that's what I love about this hearth room. 
It's great for two, three, four people. Right. And it's a perfect place to unwind, yet it's connected, so connected to the kitchen here that you're still all together, even though you're in distinct spaces, which I really like. So just off the kitchen and hearth room is the back hall, which leads to the garage and also the laundry room area and drop zone. So it works really nicely that way, very convenient. I think this is a great time to talk about how do you live and especially with an open concept, you need an away space. And away space becomes that room that you can close the door, maybe somebody wants to read a book, they're doing some work. And in open concept living, it's noise travels. And so what we always try to do is design a space on the first floor that you can close some doors. And that's where we're heading right now. So, and this is the away room. We've got it set up as a home office space and design, which is really great. And what I always think for a couple is you want rooms to be multi-use. And sometimes we talk about flex spaces as they'll flex from one usage for a couple of years to another usage two or three years later as your life transition. But I really think what we want to talk about is multi-use rooms today. How does this work? And I think this is really a fun room and we're gonna get a chance to see how this works today as a multi-use room. I have a feeling I'm gonna see a little surprise on this wall here. Yeah, exactly. This is one of those things that I'm talking about, multi-use spaces. So we're, we're in this home office, but oftentimes people say, hey, I want a second bedroom on the main level, maybe for a short-term guest or something like that. And here, you've got this great hidden bedroom here. And so for 10, days out of a 365 day a year this works as a bedroom and it's just awesome this is a murphy bed isn't it yeah yeah well it's actually called a wall bed but people know them as murphy beds because that was kind of the original inventor of it i noticed there's two entrances to this room yeah well the reason is is you want that great view off the main foyer but this also when it acts as a bedroom will be a great entrance to the back hall, to the full bathroom in the back hall. So it works really nicely that way and can works perfect for a guest. And so now we're walking, I would assume, to the first floor master, correct? Yeah, this is the first floor master bedroom. And as we design first floor bedrooms, we often think about lighting, we think about bedroom location, we think about size of bed. And so as you can see in this room, on the side of the bed that the wall's on, we've got a couple of great high windows on each side of the bed. And in this case, it's bringing in some west light, which is really nice. We've got a great mulled window on the south side, letting in a lot of south light, especially during the winter time here. And also, I always like to have a chair, space for a chair or something like that for in a bedroom, whether it's getting dressed or just sitting again, you know, with the door closed, reading a book or whatever you might want to do. So here we're into the master bathroom. And one of the things I'd like to point out in the master is there is not a tub. And this is one of those decisions, again, as we make is space and usage and what the owners really want. What they want is they want that nice, bigger custom shower and the tub just simply becomes something that's not used that they've got to clean. And so we took that space, we put it into the big shower. For the guests, we do have tubs in other rooms. So if there is somebody with a small child, they've got the spaces there. So we've got to think about that. You still want a tub in the house, but probably more than likely no longer in the master bedroom. Yeah, so what you can see, again, we went with a decorative tile here to really add some interest in the master bathroom. It's a ceramic tile. It's got that concrete look, yet it's a little bit more durable and a lot, lot more cost effective as you're making buying decisions. Then we moved into a very clean countertop, a cultured marble countertop that really is very pretty and with an undermount bowl that gives a nice rich feel. One of the other things that's really cool here is mirrors really can be important. What we often like to do, as we did in the case with the master bathroom here, is we took the mirror all the way to the ceiling. The mirror bounces light, adds light, adds space. And by taking it all the way to the ceiling, it really takes a space and completely expands it, which is important as you're thinking about the design and layout. Before we go up the stairs, let's just highlight the stairs and let's highlight how they can add or take away from spaces. One of the things we did here, even though the basement isn't finished, what we did is we opened the stairs all the way to the basement. It actually opened space to the back hall here, made this 
wider and actually brought in more light to the stairwell and also to the upper stairwell to make it, I think, an interesting architectural feature. Now here we made a decision to go with uh, carpenter built stairs, so they're fully carpeted stairs, but yet it's still a very interesting architectural feature. We're well, coming up to the second floor again. Here's the open stairwell, which I think is really important. Now we designed this house primarily for first floor living. We've got a couple of bedrooms up and we've got this great loft area. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, there's not a light on in this thing. You aren't backlighting me. The reason there's light on in here is because we've got two Velux skylights. And I think that's always the challenge is you end up with spaces, and this is an interior space. There's no windows here, but we can get a ton of natural light through the roof, which really opens this space up. And one of the great things is you can even have them that power vent or power shades, which is really wonderful. And so as you're looking at housing to get light inside to the middle of the house where you can't have an outside wall with a window, a skylight is really a good choice. And we chose Velux. Now up here on this level, what we have is, again, we've got the loft, two bedrooms. This room right here is designed as a bedroom. It's the way we're showing it here. One of the things that I really like about story and a half work, houses I love you get these very interesting ceilings and that's what I like where you instead of just a rectangle that you're living in we've got some movement on the ceiling which I think really adds an architectural feature that's very interesting so again upstairs we have two bedrooms so what we have is a full bathroom up here with, I think, again, it's a, it's a great ceramic tile. This has a wood look, which I think is very interesting. And we've got some beautiful cabinets with a dark stain on it, very nice. And then we actually, this room up here, we're using as our sales office. So it's uh, it's got our desks in it for our sales team. But it's here. a good size room though. It's a great room. And you could picture somebody who says, hey, I really want a home office. What a fantastic home office on the second floor away. And those are things that you want to think about. Core, beautiful home, excellent tour, thank you. No, hey, it's been a lot of fun being with you, Sean, and taking you through the process of building. I really appreciate the opportunity. And what I would say for those who have been watching, you know, engage with your builder. There's, you want to be a team. It's a fun process that you can get in. Think about how you want to live. Think about the spaces and talk about it and work with your builder. You're going to have a great time. All right, thanks a lot. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you.